Dr. Soskolny, you are a professor of epidemiology and health sciences at the University of Alberta. And just as a general question, what is epidemiology and how does it affect us? Epidemiology is the study of diseases as they affect populations. Not just diseases, but generally the questions of well-being, social well-being, as they affect population groups or communities at large. The epidemiologist is more concerned with the community, so you end up with a relationship between the epidemiologist and the community, or the city, or the country. Why is epidemiology an important science in today's society as opposed to, say, 10 years ago? Epidemiology has been important, certainly in the modern period, since the discovery of antibiotics in the 1940s with the control of infectious diseases. Until the early 1980, 81 to be exact, when HIV AIDS came along, at which point people thought that infectious diseases could be laid to rest, they were well controlled. But since the 1980s, with the advent of SARS and uh, now avian flu and the looming anticipated flu pandemic, infectious diseases are again preeminent in the focus of epidemiologists in the world. But I believe that epidemiology has always been critical because what it does is it bridges the basic sciences with public health, with the health of the communities. Epidemiology seems to encompass many different topics. You mentioned science and healthcare. Where does climate change fit in? How, how does climate change affect human health in general? If you consider that if the air we breathe is unhealthy and the soil that we grow plants is, is un, incapable of generating or, or contains all kinds of hazardous substances and toxic substances for people and the uh, water quality is inferior, then the public's health is in grave jeopardy. I mean, so much so that you will see extinctions of large communities or the elimination or the illnesses in large in communities on a massive scale. And the job of the epidemiologist is to ensure air, water, and soil quality. So when you ask the question, how does climate change affect, this, affect us? Well, as we tamper with the very fabric of our uh, of our environment that constitutes the habitat that we are part of. Uh, as the habitat changes, new niches will be found for all kinds of species of pathogens, bugs, uh, creepy crawlies, call them what you will, that will potentially uh, affect human beings. What effects are we going to see and how long will it take to set in? The question you ask is a very interesting one in that uh, that really is the kind of work that I've been engaged in with the World Health Organization, among others, for the past decade, trying to uh, anticipate how long we've got for major declines or major thresholds in these ecological systems that we depend on for our very sustenance to sustain themselves. If these systems flip as uh, people at the University of Alberta have shown systems do and other ecologists and biologists around the world have shown. If we keep pushing the limits of what nature can withstand from our in infinite greed and consumptive lifestyles, what are we individually and collectively as a society willing to do to try to contain the damage that we have caused already to the environment and to these different ecosystems around the world. Perhaps it seems in some people's minds it's easier to be unethical towards an ecosystem than another human being, but in fact these unethical decisions that we're making are having a direct impact on our very lives, on our, on our daily living. Well, worse than that, in my view, <laughs> is perhaps we can be short-sighted enough to say, well, you know, I've got to have a job today and the economy is all important today. But when we think about what the impact of this is going to be on, our, on the children of today and on future generations, that's where I like to call myself an advocate for the environment as ecologists and other biologists and types like us would be in the world. And, you know, we need advocates for children because children can't speak out about the, the potential for the disastrous future, the calamitous consequences of what we're doing for their sustenance and their ability to have children and the effects of the pollution on their genetic material for their children. These are things that already go, are going on. It's a question of 
for how much longer it can go on. The role of epidemiology is preventive. Um, we believe that the, the advice that we give is to take the safest course of action so that we are not faced with infiltration of any kinds of chemical pollutants or toxins or poisons of any kind that could affect the water treatment facility. If you think about potentially some level of contamination hitting the Rossdale water treatment plant and they being unaware of it and that this should go out and cause illness in 10 people, 30 people, this causes a huge burden to the healthcare system in terms of what ends up in hospitals. So our job is a constant one. We're constantly in tension with economics or with other perspectives on what might be a better solution.